Hey there, Husky Dogs, and welcome to Muffed Movies Beyond Thunderdome Part 3, the final installment. Before we begin, I'd like to give a great big shout out to our brand new Patreon patron, Jennifer Fueling. Thank you so much for supporting us, Jennifer. It is awesome. Um, if you folks out there want to support Muffed Movies on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash blasterpodcast. That's the name of the old podcast. And you can get fabulous rewards such as a never-before-published episode of Muff Movies starring everybody's favorite friend, Andy North. Um, you get a shout-out. You can get commentary tracks. You can even get T-shirts, man. So check us out on Patreon. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening. Please enjoy this show, and happy Halloween. Welcome, everybody, to Muffed Movies. Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome Part 3. And joining me once again in the Muff Chamber is my good man, Dave Stecco. Oh. Dave, thanks for being back for this part of the Muff Movies episode. Oh, well, you know what? After the, the uh, previous part, I thought, you know what? Let's keep let's keep this going. It's a wise choice, and it's a frugal choice. <laughs> I already paid for parking at, at Muff Studios. <laughs> Planet Muff is, <laughs> is my theme restaurant. Get a lot of walkouts. <laughs> a lot of walkouts. Yeah, yeah, not a fan of the burger. <laughs> um, here we go! Smash cut to the desert. Mad Max lies in a pile of dead horse. <laughs> the horse bubbling and blistering in the sun as it gets slowly just absorbed by the sand. Oh, just becoming more and more of a Tacos Bel Grande by the minute. <laughs> Sorry, horse fanciers. This movie pulls no punches <laughs> as they show a stunt horse kneeling down and Max falling off and then a cut to an obvious prop dead horse lion <laughs> with its little tonguey tongue licking the dirt. A, a tiny mini sarlacc tentacle grabs the horse and <laughs> pulls it into its, its... I mean, it's still eating a horse. Like a sarlacc of, of any size is a threat to you, so don't think it's weak, but it's just not a full-sized sarlacc pit yet. Yeah. I- Tiny Sarlacc can still eat a horse. Yeah, exactly. It's a Sarlite? Sarlacc? Sarlacc. Yeah, so dead horse, but good news for Max. He's off that horse. Mm-hmm. Max. Um, God doesn't close a horse without oh, opening a, something else. Max slithers and slavers <laughs> around in his novelty big boy helmet (laughs) and finally extracts his sweaty rob zombie matted hair face from underneath um the the shade and the heat of that plastic dome oh crikey i i swear i will not let this be the end of me i will (laughs) survive i've i know the desert like my own hands and i will my own litter box (laughs) I will go forward. I I have a small amount of water, and I, I'm I'm gonna make it. <laughs> Smash cut uh, to well, Mad Max passing out face down <laughs> in the desert. <laughs> Twenty minutes later. Right. Um, yeah. Mad Max's prone form is just snoring. Little bubbles coming out of his nose. Uh, uh oh, but what's this? The evil tiny sarlax tentacle is not yet sated with horse meat. It comes out and it snares Mad Max around his trademark desert boot. Like the greasy finger of the collector reaching out for another dip. <laughs> it begins to slowly haul Mad Max down towards its teething baby sarlacc mouth. <laughs> when suddenly, <laughs> Chim Chim, the <laughs> monkey, bites that little tentacle off. The mini Sarlacc screams, and the monkey manages uh, to awaken its master just enough for Max to scrumble 
up the desert dune and away from his demise. Chim Chim clad in the tiniest, cutest still suit you've ever seen. <laughs> Mad Max scoops him up, gives him a big kiss, and then wrings him out like a sponge into his mouth. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's no hydration like ape hydration. <laughs> Although technically, it's monkey hydration. Apes uh. don't have tails. <laughs> Science! Um, yeah, so Max is starting to feel himself again. He's kind of mm-hmm. getting back into the swing of uh, walking without rhythm. When suddenly, <laughs> over the horizon, he sees a silhouetted form of a young woman named Savannah, though we never actually learn her name in the Oof. movie. That's her name, folks. Savannah, uh, uh, skillfully, Johnny Cage shadowed kicks her way across the dunes and appears immediately before Max like some sort of Benny Gesserit witch. She puts a young but practiced hand upon his uh, cracked and blistered shoulder. Come with me if you want to live, she says. Max shrugs and follows. <laughs> we see the Indiana Jones map come up and a little... <laughs> Red hash marks. <laughs> Finally land on the X, which says, Village of the Lost Tribe. Child cut. <laughs> the, 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 the canyon of Los Niños. <laughs> Los Niños Perditos. <laughs> Max wakes up with a start. Oh, he must have passed out while he was walking with Savannah. So boring. <laughs> <laughs> Just kept telling this story of um, going by de by over and over. Mm-hmm. Um, Max looks around and sees that he's in another high hide. What the fuck is up with people in this region and their high hides? Is this suddenly, a floodplain? <laughs> suddenly, Chim Chim, the badass monkey. <laughs> screams straight into Max's face, and he uh, instinctively uh, scrambles backwards and falls out of a bamboo window. Ah! Is this the end of Mad Max? Twang. No. <laughs> it's just a big, uh, uh, it's just a little bit of a jokery, a little hazing on the part of the feral children. Yeah, um, strange, because Max is saved from falling into a river... Uh, by a, a cord that has been tied to his ankle. So perhaps he was a prisoner while he was unconscious. Perhaps they just wanted to Ewok him. They, I don't they, know. They did also draw that dick on his face, so I think they were just hazing him because he was passed out. Mm. Yeah, that's possible. Uh, yeah, Max swings like a meaty pendulum <laughs> over some sweet w- 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 water. <laughs> It's a fucking lazy river rapids ride hanging out below him. Beautiful green Australian river uh, where kids, kids are just like having a fun swim about. A swim a do, if you will. It's goanna free. They can just swim without fear of goannas. What's a goanna? It's like a monitor lizard. Bad fish. Oh, okay. There's no aqua koalas. <laughs> there's, there's no swim bears. <laughs> I guess would it be a, dr- a dunk bear? <laughs> Dunkaroos. <laughs> yeah. Um, and fortunately, the Hilo scorpions are miles away. <laughs> There's the scorpions that have helicopter uh, <laughs> stingers. Blades. Yeah. Whoa, Max is fucking swooping around and the children are just chanting at him screeching for him to fly fly captain fly <laughs> that's this delicious crumb max he's fallen 10 feet he's been splashed upon by water he got cut loose there's a thousand feral kids screaming at him and he's very confused very upset full fear boner he is never going to take the time to unpack that and <laughs> Just everything he says, the kids just start screaming back at him. <laughs> and honestly, I feel like his ankle should be broken. Yeah. Considering that he fell full body weight, <laughs> dead stop, immediately above the water, hanging by the ankle. Yeah. But, but. he's got uh, he's got desert bones. 
He does have desert they're kind bones. of they're kind of rubbery. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. The, oh, surrounded by grunters, these little <laughs> filthy little lost boy kids are like pseudo linguistic. He's like, oh, what are what are you doing here? Where, where am I? Where I? What doing? <laughs> yeah, they're they're above master, but below Deckard Kane. They're, they're <laughs> on the in... Yoda scale. Are they below <laughs> Yoda? I think the kids are above Yoda. Oh shit! Shots fired. Are they above Red Yoda? I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Red Yoda is like a <laughs> it's like a Red Hulk. <laughs> yes, yeah, like a a fake stupid thing that I feel like I made up in your presence, or maybe you made up. <laughs> <I> mean... <laughs> I don't remember that at all. I don't know. It might have been at a bar. Um, oh <coughs> shit! It Red was at the it was at the bachelor party. We were playing the fighting game. I think. I don't know that fighting game where we punch each other for real. <laughs> it's a fun game. I still have a court date. And then and then I yell at Flora's brother-in-law. <laughs> uh, sorry, Flora's brother-in-law. Yeah. Okay. Surrounded by kids. Oh, boy, this is the last thing I want, Max says to himself. Um, when suddenly, a teenage boy uh, emerges from a cave. He must be one of the leaders, or at least a, a village elder, because he's 16 years old. And he is he's bringing big golden boy energy to this party. Yeah, he's about two years away from being in the Rocky Horror Picture Show movie. <laughs> He's ready. He's he's. I mean, you know, not to not to uh, objectify and fetishize the body of a teenage boy, but but listen, it's pretty. You're listening like to this podcast for a reason. <laughs> Does he want to hear me talk about the boys? <laughs> oh, Bring the out boys. the boys. <laughs> you keep uh, them good in the legs. Good gotta in the keep arms. Them arms nice. Gotta keep that belly nice. <laughs> anyway, ugh. Uh, the d- dirty words. Yeah, this teenage boy comes forth and gathers everyone. Uh, it's time for fucking Ewok slash Reign of Fire style history yep. where we pretend like we have a TV set and we're watching TV. Mel Gibson is not feeling it. No. Savannah is holding this wicker fake uh, framing device and uh, showing all these cave hieroglyphs that the children have uh drawn onto the wall of the cave and it's like a pan am jet a pan am jet crashing uh and a christ-like pilot who's holding all the village of children on his arms yeah that's captain walker Mm -hmm. and he is uh texas ranger (laughs) yeah and and walker texas ranger he abandoned these children a long time ago and all the adults were like hey we're gonna all go for help all of us and just yeah. so you know we're gonna come back we're gonna write our names down on the wall and uh and i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> big one you look after the little one <laughs> and then the kids multiplied magically and there's like thousands of kids no one of sexual maturity to birth a kid. So either the survivors of the plane crash had a million kids they just abandoned or clone wars. <laughs> it's you know what? Sometimes I feel like we'll never get to the bottom of and and despite their protestations that they kept everything marked and membered huge holes in this story. <laughs> You know, but for me, it's just that's exciting because there's so much of the Mad Max cinematic universe left mm-hmm. to explore. Uh, the the kids begin pointing at Max and his dark colored duster jacket, and they they take uh, a hollowed and rotten out uh, pilot's cap and place it upon Max's matted, gross head. Captain Walker, Captain Walker, they begin Walker, chanting. Walker, Walker. They've got like weird chants. They've been working. They've been working overtime on their own 
cargo cult devoted mm-hmm. to Captain Walker and doing good work. But doing uh, the Lord's work, the, the, the Walker's work. Now, Mad Max, as we know from Road Warrior, um, has interacted with children before. The the savage little child that um, helped him fight off bad guys at the end of Road Warrior, who kind of took a shine to. You know, these aren't the first kids he's encountered. Yeah. He himself was a father. Yeah, he and... he made a he made a real solid swing at raising a kid. That kid. I mean, that was a, that was probably a good two years of his life that he's like, hey, I'm a dad. Yeah. So with all of this parental knowledge, all of this understanding and sensitivity, Mad Max does the only thing he can. <laughs> he takes the captain's hat, breaks it in half and stuffs it immediately up the ass of the oldest child. <laughs> Fuck your fucking religion, you fucks. Yeah. I'm Mad Max. I'm not I declare nice this child to be 18 years old, so <laughs> all of my actions are legal. <laughs> no, Captain Walker. Yeah, and then he sets about just trying to systematically destroy their belief system <laughs> in the laziest way possible. You know, mate. You know, it's, it's all trash. Everything he said's wrong. Uh, nope. There's no uh, salvation. A walk is dead. Uh, your parents are dead. Uh, there is no God. <laughs> there is no God. I'm going to have a bit of a nap. And what time's dinner? Uh, the kids are just like dumbfounded. But Savannah stands proud and tall. She refuses to believe this heresy from this strange false walker. And she... <laughs> gathers up some of her acolytes. We shall wander into the desert until we find evidence that our religion is true. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, this is this is like a very energetic equivalent of holding your breath till you get your way. Like, <laughs> yeah. We are going to risk our lives physically every waking second until you agree <laughs> to do what we want and that's be our Jesus. Yeah. We're off to Tomorrow Morrow Land, she says, which is, uh, you know, the old world, the cities of old. They, they have a slideshow about it. We're not going to get into that. Yeah. Now, wait just a minute, Mad Max says. He takes a rifle yeah. from let, the oldest let boy. Me, let me talk these kids out of this the only way I know how. And fires a warning shot. Salvaged right fire. Savannah's arms. leg. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> She screams and clutches her Australian leg. Fortunately, being Australian, uh, it's going to take a lot more than a bullet to the leg to stop her. Well, she's Australian. That's her false leg. It detaches to uh, to allow predators. Yeah, predators then focus on the leg, and she's free to run off. Nice. The ginkgo bilobas begin <laughs> feasting on, on the leg. <laughs> no, no, Savannah. You're going to attract the heliscorpions. <laughs> <laughs> um, Savannah's uh, troop of hype boys all throw their bamboo spears at Mad Max, who deftly maneuvers and muscles for rank. <laughs> He'll burn fast on an empty tank. <laughs> also, he doesn't get hit by the spears. The spears have gone down and the bullets went up. <laughs> and long ago, Walker left with a cup. <laughs> We're off, motherfucker, says Savannah, <laughs> grabbing up some soft and delicate youths and they stride into the desert <laughs> the eerie ululations of deuces echoing off the canyon walls as they leave <laughs> suddenly uh Ar- arceus the wind god <laughs> appears high in the sky and pulls the kids little um makeshift kite slash pterodon <laughs> straight up into the air ah the Ewok-like children cry. Tis a sign! Tis a sign from the Lord! It must be a sign. The winds! The winds! Um, all the kids scramble off, uh, out, out of the village, up onto the cliff face, over the cliffs, into the dunes. Oh, fuck, Max says, and just begrudgingly, uh, slow walks after them. (laughs) They're gonna get themselves killed, these kids. He, uh, he follows... And crests 
the breast of the desert <laughs> to find the massive wind has uncovered ninety uh, percent of a crashed seven forty seven. It's a plane. And, and one of the kids has adapted to have magnet hands and is able to shimmy his way up to the top <laughs> of the tail and just, just sit up there like, hey. <laughs> I was, I was going to say like slim pickings on a nuclear bomb, but. <laughs> kids, you know about slim pickings, right? <laughs> um, the uh, ancient 747. Let's out a low bellow. <laughs> oh, it's terribly sick, says Savannah, <laughs> petting the side, the the air gills of the 747. <laughs> it needs food. Mad Max runs down to the uh, the airship and lays his body atop of it, moving up and down with it as it breathes. <laughs> Dr. Harding <laughs> Wait, uh, Ellie Sattler looks over at some local bushes and checks the berries. These are poisonous. These are toxic to eat. Why Have you been you feeding these... these to the airplane? Dr. Harding, who's manning the Jeep, says, <laughs> uh, yeah, we planted them there because we thought uh, it would look nice. You have no idea about paleobotany, do you? What the fuck's paleobotany? <laughs> I don't know. Where are we? Australia, I think. <laughs> oh, shit. We're way off course. Um, the children feed Ellie Sattler and Dr. Harding <laughs> to the, the plane, which uh, regains some of its strength. It rears up and knowingly nods the giant gaping maw of its mouth. And once again, Shai Hulud <laughs> buries itself amongst the dunes, leaving only the spice in its wake. <laughs> Oh, we were going to fly that to tomorrow morrow land. I shouldn't have woken it up. <laughs> I guess it just have to get high on spice then. <sighs> spice cut. <laughs> <coughs> um, we see a small cadre of uh, child fools setting out. Um, past the domain, past the borders of their land, into unknown desert. In the sneaky, kids... sneaky dead of night, whilst whilst a sweet-faced and trusting Mad Max dreams of ladyboys and... and... <laughs> Smegma Brigade. <laughs> <laughs> dreams of having a son that he can just tossle around in the... <laughs> In the storage area of his station wagon, no seatbelt whatsoever. None. Wes burns and 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 two armed wife tussles. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um. Yeah, this small group of kids is uh, wandering when suddenly one of them cries out, "Ah!" That small sarlacc is not done yet, motherfucker. <laughs> it grabs Timothy by the ankle and slurps him under the desert sand. Oh, no. Create a human rope ladder, <laughs> says Savannah, thinking quickly. And all the tiny children uh, grab each other's emaciated ankles and arms, <laughs> trying to pull young Timothy free from the sarlacc's ravenous maw. One of the children manages to mention something about this feels more like a suicide pact than a rescue, but is quickly shushed by the imp in the moment. <coughs> What's all this then? <laughs> they turn and see <gasps> Mad Max cresting the hill, riding his trusty protoceratops. Ba -ba -da -ba, ba -ba -da -ba. Oh my god, it's Mad Max! He's running into the ring! He's going a diving leap and he's grabbed the ankle of the last child in the suicide ladder! Oh, he's going for it! <laughs> With manful strength, the Protoceratops tugs Mad Max's leg and flings many of the children free from the vicious tug of the Sarlacc. Unfortunately, Timothy has already been partially digested and <laughs> is left to his natural fate. 
a, a, a bleached and wretched torso is pulled, dangling a spinal cord. They just sort of let go and maybe push it back in a little bit. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Better you than me, motherfucker. <laughs> he didn't it's... have his best car armor on. He died as he lived. Disgustingly? <laughs> I'm being cho- swallowed by the sand? I, it's just something you say when someone gets dissolved by a sarlacc. <laughs> yeah. Classic. <laughs> um, death cut. <laughs> to the outskirts of the fucking barter town. Yeah, the lights of the big, biggest little city that never sleeps because it won't wake up is <laughs> shining bright all night. To- yeah. Uh, Savannah looks around at her um, band of misfits and realizes that that was the only fast travel location she had other than home. (laughs) Whoops, she says, looking around. They've suddenly appeared right before the gates of Barter Town. (laughs) Oh, you you fucking fools. Don't you know that Barter Town's gonna eat you alive? Look, we gotta gotta get out from under their uh, prying eyes. Quickly! Mad Max says, and he pries open the uh, Super Mario shit pipe. <laughs> <laughs> There's no piranha plant in this one. He digga, stuffs digga, the digga. kids down into the pipe, digga, and they digga, go digga. down, down to Goblin Town. Digga, digga, digga. <laughs> into the underworld, appropriately named. Uh, yeah. The... I'll, be, I'll be real honest with you, kids. Uh, my motivations at this point get murky. <laughs> but best I could think of, we'll infiltrate. Uh, there's a whole shit world. Just it's just pigs and shit. We'll get in there and uh, play it by ear. Maybe find something to eat. It doesn't sound right. Uh, get some. I don't reckon there's water down there. Uh, we, we're just gonna. You know what? We're gonna stay together as a group for safety. <laughs> we'll just uh, take it as it comes. And uh, there we go. Off you go in, in, into this pipe that is not guarded at all. Are we going back here to reclaim your stolen property, Max? Well, well I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> and I and don't... neither had the script writers. <laughs> yeah. And I don't reckon I'll start now. <coughs> like right. I said, we'll just take it one meter a pipe at a time <laughs> and assume everything will it just it'll work out. The kids begin to Mission Impossible their way through the pipe system, and they see, through the pipe grating, um, a whole dance floor full of service pigs, and in the center of them, terrified in a tiny little punishment paddock, is Master himself. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. He's now surrounded by ravenous swine much like in the movie Hannibal or the TV series Hannibal if you watch that <laughs> from once atop his six foot lofty perch he has now been brought low to the level of the pigs that he so deeply fears mm-hmm. and though he be a man when they look upon him they see naught but an acorn <laughs> delicious delicious acorn full of been forced to wear a acorn meat <clears throat> I remember when we were men, says a pig, and we would feast upon acorn meat <laughs> before the nukes, before the dark times. Those times will come again. Behold, they have given unto us an acorn. Soon, my brethren, we shall feast and rise up. It's a small man, says one of the children. We're small children. He belongs with us. We must rescue him. And it's, I uh, suppose, as good a reason as any. Don't feel like uh, really getting too much further into it than that. As long as we are all together and avoiding anybody seeing us. As Max finishes his sentence, he notices that all the children have (laughs) jumped out of the pipe and are just scrambling around on the pig floor. Some of them are riding the pigs. Other of them are trying to dig deeper into the shit mud of the floor to create a second underworld. (laughs) One of them's just... Just like cracking poppers and huffing them. <laughs> Party drugs! 
yeah, these these kids have realized what no one did is that this is not a power plant. This is a Jankum factory. And they are they are huffing their little hearts out. They've mm-hmm. never been so high. <laughs> no gods, no masters is what the lost tribe believes in. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Suddenly. Me, yeah, Skullboy uh, Skullboy's up in the rafters. He's adopted the monkey. They're a team now. They're like yeah. a they're like that a working trait. man's master blaster. <laughs> <laughs> but it's more of a partnership of equals. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, they learn the lessons of their fathers. Iron Bar and uh, two other generic Iron Bars are standing on the top of a catwalk doing their little turn. <laughs> are, are, are Iron Bars and generic Iron Bars, are they like the next rank up from the Wes squads? Yeah, okay. yeah, they are. Um, I don't think the generic iron bars actually have character names, but no, I'm I'm just working on an org chart. <laughs> uh, suddenly, the Minky was the lookout for the gang. It spots Max, comma mad, points at him, and screeches because it has no fucking allegiance. It's a real <laughs> Benedict Arnold of primates. <laughs> It's just so filled with rage at the at the wezes and the arm bars. It can't contain its battle cry. Oh no, guys! <laughs> it seems Mad Max has returned to the underworld, and he's gonna try to. Well, I don't know what his objective is here. It's not well spelled out, but kill him. <laughs> uh, generic rebars hop down from their catwalk into the pig shit, and they pull firearms out they begin blasting around shooting kids in the head neck and chest <laughs> oh my god why did we come here suddenly ballroom blitz plays over the speakers and the pigs go into a feeding frenzy just chomping generic, down on wounded children generic rebars <laughs> getting torn apart max rebo's flying over <laughs> Oh, uh, size noodles. <laughs> she knows better, and she grabs a, 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 a pulley and hoists herself high into the air with her grapnel. <laughs> she just knows that if anything happens to Auntie, she's next in line to run harder down. <laughs> That's right. Max Rebo was not so fortunate. <laughs> no. The blue, pigs got him. <laughs> blue trunk litters blue. the floor. <laughs> Blue acorn meat spread out everywhere. Oh no. Is that Max Rebo's secret? He's filled with acorns? <laughs> the... Wow, that was why he's so popular with the ladies. <laughs> the I'm nuts. sorry, folks, if you don't know who Max Rebo is, if you're not a gigantic <laughs> Star Wars nerd like me and uh, Steko. <laughs> but them's the breaks. <clears throat> oh man. Several of the children have been killed, but several of the bad guys have been killed. So, you know, whatever. It sounds Max. like a good place for detente to begin, and yet this is the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Max kicks in the door to the tiny paddock where Master is being held. Did you miss me? He says. <laughs> I don't even know who the fuck you are. <laughs> Were okay. you in town for two days? Didn't I try to break your neck like three times? That's right, Max says. He pulls down his collar and reveals how truly wobbly his jiggly (laughs) neck is. Now let's get you the horse out of here. Good idea, says the master. He, (coughs) master, toots his own bosun's whistle. And suddenly the skeletal steampunk metal horse that he created early in his career rips out of its metal coffin and trots across the pig floor, smashing pork and villain alike. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's get out! Me have inexplicable transport! (laughs) (laughs) Oh, says the autonomous (laughs) camel schooner. Sorry, we had some great times together, old friend. Uh, but blood is thicker than water. And I bled into this horse to give it life. Magic, says Master. Very strange, says Max straight to the camera. He gathers up the two surviving children, puts them on the back of the cyber stallion, <laughs> and they begin their violent 
Canter. Straight out of Compton. <laughs> Camel Scooter looks over its fender. This isn't over. <laughs> and rolls balefully away. <laughs> Iron Bar looks up from the shit and piss ocean that <laughs> he had been relegated to. He sees his goons have been thwarted, and he himself has been disarmed by a, a clever pig <laughs> that took his rifle <laughs> The pigs begin walking on two legs and in a very animal farm fashion liberate themselves. They <clears throat> blow up the central uh, power generator of the underworld and Barter Town is thrown into chaos. A battle cry of milk and apples <laughs> echoes over Barter Town. As ah! Ambulatory pigs flood out only to, to run immediately into Thunderdome in a fit of bad planning. Oops. <laughs> They're distracted by some truffles and <laughs> <laughs> begin chewing at the sand. <laughs> no pigs of mine escape Thunderdome, <laughs> says Tina Turner. If, if, um, if you if you catch the pigs, you you got a swig, and everyone just starts drinking because those are the laws. <laughs> those laid down. I really wish we hadn't stuck to this rhyme scheme thing. <laughs> So just I just um, don't feel like how A is, is is attached to B here. I don't, I I don't pass me another drink. Out of the corner of Tina Turner's immaculately applied mascara and eyeball, she sees the Thunder Stallion, uh, riding off with her special engineer master and her bitter military rival Max, and also two kids. What the fuck is that? <laughs> she says, "Boys, after them." Yeah, it says in, in, in case of of Mecca horse steampunk horse smash, and it's just a thing that says "call in all wes." <laughs> We're gonna have to call in all wes for this. Wes, 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 wes. Wes we, got start... Wes <laughs> we got Wes on! We got Wes. start pouring out of every <laughs> hole and crevice in the earth. Wes's are like jumping down fireman poles, sliding, throwing on their jumpsuits, getting into their dune buggies that have skulls on the front of them. Wes! We're going to Wes! <laughs> <laughs> We see a, a radio operator in the command booth. <laughs> this is not a drill. Repeat, we have full Wes. Full Wes. This is not a drill. <laughs> the pig struck Barter Town. Would you like to know more? <laughs> <clears throat> Any Wes that cannot find a dune buggy, uh, a, a skull wagon, or a, a, a warg. Uh, <laughs> Bone sled. <laughs> <laughs> a, 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 a skin slide fire wagon a, a, a cry, fire cr a cry cycle <laughs> a cry cycle <laughs> um <clears throat> anyways any of them that can't get transport uh mount up onto one of those mean mean hogs and uh you know do the the spiritual blood packs they need to do to bond with them and race after the chrome horse, uh, the uh, cyber stallion, Morty. And... <laughs> Unfortunately, they couldn't afford the rights to war pigs for this scene. <laughs> <laughs> no. Suicide Squad can, but, you know, <laughs> they got a lot of money behind them. Actually, I don't think Suicide Squad used that song, but they used every other song. Yeah. I'm talking about the bad Suicide Squad, not the more recent good Suicide Squad. All right, you motherfucker, says <laughs> Tina Turner. Finally stepping on the ground in this movie. <laughs> it's time for me to get down and dirty. She, Do uh... you need a ride? <laughs> the, a completely autonomous camel wagon rolls up, and she's delighted to hop into the, the front mur murder seat. A common enemy makes strange bedfellows. Let's go, autonomous camel schooner. All right. <laughs> for ruin... For death and the red dawn. <laughs> what does he say? Wolverine. <laughs> Have we got off the rails? <laughs> I'm Rick James. <laughs> Fucking pandemonium is the new name of Barter Town, and the poor collector is totally uh, trampled on 
by pigs, wheels, and feels. He's just vibing out, and he's totally not liking what he's feeling. He's stuck to the ground with his own skin wetness. You forgot to redeem your ticket, he says. <laughs> Number 11. <laughs> uh, he's listening to lo-fi beats to die to. <laughs> And and there's just and Barter Town is just empty. Smash cut. What would be the highway, but is now just the vacant, empty tracts of wasteland. It's a high speed chase as Thunder Horse, the Chrome Stallion, uh, runs as fast as possible to evade the death buggies. <laughs> I'm creeping down. <laughs> says James Hetfuck. <laughs> the post-apocalyptic James Hetfield. Yeehaw, Auntie! This is this is Cowboy Cletus r- r- in in the Calico f- 5 on your 6. <laughs> this is Gold 2 reporting in. <laughs> Roger Gold 2. I've got Cowboy Cletus on my wing. This is Dirge the Spike Bringer. <laughs> Coming up here your left flank. All right, all right. I see him, kid. I got him. Wes 5, watch your 6. <laughs> huh? Ah! <laughs> Wes 5 crashes into the canyon side of the Tatooinean cliff face as a Tusken Raider <laughs> holds its rifle aloft and yells, <laughs> Wes 5 is immediately replaced by Wes's 6 through 15 in formation. <laughs> Oh no! Too many wezzes! <laughs> Says uh, Master, who inexplicably in the actual movie is now wearing a fucking like conductor's uniform and derby hat. Yeah, he's like, hey, I, I'm so old, I was alive in the 1930s, which he was. <laughs> True. <laughs> it's inexplicable. Okay, in the real movie, they like steal a sort of pseudo train um, that's but- also a building. Uh, and the, like one was, of the kids was the and, train the power plant. I think we are to assume that okay. the train was also the. It's 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 inscrutable. Like yeah. why are the why are the train tracks? Why is the train a building? Why is it the power plant? How does that work? Uh, anyway, yeah. But in the real movie, like one of the kids and master put on fucking like bowler hats for no reason. I guess yeah. just because they're in a train. Yeah, it's like Ma- like uh, Master was like, no, I used to be a Swiss watchmaker, and uh, it's about time I got back to my roots. I want to yeah. die as I wanted to live. I, I put aside my my leather samurai helmet, and I shall... <laughs> I totally forgot about that. He had a samurai helmet. <laughs> That's appropriative. <laughs> George Miller. Ooh, yes, you'll find that Master was quite transgressive. Who me? He <laughs> says coquettishly. <laughs> Being robbed of all of his guns, Max grabs a fistful of stones and begins chucking them as hard as he can towards the Wes Armada. <laughs> Fortunately for him, they're Tie Fighters are an older model and they're flimsy as fuck. He manages. <laughs> To penetrate three of their uh, shields uh, before the rest of them catch on and m- modulate their shield frequencies. Master is radioing to, to Max that there are too many towers at the edges of the cliff. Max, irritated, screams, You take care of the Wezzes, I'll take care of the towers. This is going to be close, Max says, as they careen forward towards the edge, the sheer edge of a cliff face. Also, there are towers with laser blasters mounted on them. (laughs) Wait a minute. Uh, They screech the steel stallion to a halt, and right in front of them, like a miraculous uh, vision of, of religious proportions, they see a completely pure white clad imperialist standing in front of them it's jedediah jr the child (laughs) of the pilot of the microplane that knocked out max in the very beginning of the movie he levels his blunderbuss at our heroes 
All right, this is a stick up. But just over their shoulder, he notices the huge rogue squadron <laughs> of enemies and some friends <laughs> closing in. If I'm being honest. <laughs> on Max. The I've two been kids. to Barter Town a few times. <laughs> <coughs> They're good people when you get to know them. <laughs> Oh, fuck. (laughs) Looks like I'm about to get stuck up, he says. And he turns to an old Studebaker that's been buried halfway into the desert sand. The child rips open the back, the trunk, or the bonnet, as they might say in Australia. They call it the boot. Fuck. He rips open the trunk, or the boot, as they might say in Australia. Thank you, Dave. (laughs) Uh, and dives in. It's a fucking, like, secret entrance to a whole tunnel society. (laughs) How they carved out this underground catacombs, I will never know. But anyway, Max and his buddies dismount from the horse, which, uh, transforms into a suitcase. (laughs) (laughs) And they, uh, begin... Descending the ladder down through the Studebaker's boot, a baker. <laughs> through, through the tunnels of Studebaker. <laughs> My cousin Balin will give us a royal welcome, <laughs> says one of the children. They close the boot, and Tina Turner and her armada are baffled. They have no idea where their enemy could have gone. I don't have object permanence, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Wezzes circling like angry hornets. <laughs> um, Until one of them catches just a whiff of child scent. Man flesh. <laughs> the Wezzes begin prying at the now locked, strange car entrance to the underground tunnel world. We haven't got much time, says the little imperialist. And he runs into the king's chamber, the biggest underground chamber of them all, which is occupied by Jedediah. A totally unique character to this movie. Yeah. By the way, Mad Max heads, you'll notice that Jedediah is the fucking same actor as the gyro captain from Road Warrior. But he's a different character, even though he's basically the same character because he fucking flies a ridiculous little vehicle. But he's, like, not friends with Mad Max in this one. Even though Mad Max walks into the room and looks at Jedediah, and Jedediah looks at Mad Max, and they both turn into Spider-Man pointing at each other for a second. (laughs) They visibly recognize each other. Yeah, but according to all official sources, not the same character. It's just the same actor. No big deal. Yeah. Why Why are you guys so flipped out about this? You know what's funny? Like, you remember in The Matrix when I think the actress who played the Oracle died and they replaced her with a different actress in the oh, end? Yeah. In, like, the third one. And, you know, Neo is like, you look different. And she's like, yes, The Matrix does strange things. And it was like, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> like, I find it easier to believe that a different a different actor is the same character than I find it that the same actor is a different character in two <laughs> yeah. consecutive movies. You're absolutely right. It somehow creates less dissonance in your brain. Like uh, Game of Thrones, they just like recast Dario. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, and like, and, and it's not like, oh, yeah, we get to get another guy who looked like the first guy. Like, totally different looking guy. Yeah. Don't say a word. And honestly, I found out that fact after I had seen it, like, years later and was like, I'd never even noticed. <laughs> but, like, if they had, if, you know, if Sean Bean comes back in season four as, like, yeah. you know. Playing a similar character. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, there's the king of the south. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm Ben Stur- Stern. I'm Howard Stern. <laughs> I'm Howard Stern. I got the butts cut out of my pants. I'm a pig. <clears throat> anyway. So. Let's get down to business. Meanwhile, the Wezzes are busily trying to jimmy the lock on the, 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 the buried boot of the Studebaker. Mm-hmm. And uh, making good work with it. They're, they're, they're good lock pickers, the Wezzes. Yeah. Because they have a hive brain. 
<laughs> That's right, they are a collective. <laughs> we are Wes. <laughs> yeah, the Wes approaches. <laughs> We will incorporate <laughs> your unique <laughs> qualities into our own collective. Uh, yeah, Max points at Jedediah, and he says, I think I know how we're getting out of this. Flash cut to Jedediah's sweet underground airport. <laughs> There's all sorts of planes to choose from, and jet fuel galore. Well, let's see, which one, which one, which one, Max... Uh, goes around looking at all the different military jets, all the uh, private jets that billionaires use. Ah, this'll do, he says, and points to the Micro Machines <laughs> crazy clown car of a plane that oh, can I... only comfortably fit two. And he's going to stuff as many motherfuckers <laughs> as possible in there. Oh, I reckon I fancy a bit of clan car today. Get in. <laughs> Each of them writhing around in some uh, pig grease that he'd been smuggling out of Barter Town for years. <laughs> Smuggled this up my anus. <laughs> grease up, everyone, Max says, spreading his cheeks far apart and just coating the heroes <laughs> in a horrible geyser of body temperature grease. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, we've all been through worse. It's the apocalypse. <laughs> You think the Wes has got anything better to offer? <laughs> I actually found it quite pleasurable. <laughs> Wait, maybe Christopher Walken was Jedediah. Oh, yeah, maybe he was. Because I was trying to do the swamp pervert with him <laughs> as we have in the past. Well, it doesn't matter. But Jedediah is the swamp pervert and uh, Iron Bar is Christopher Walken. Oh, okay. You're still consistent. Yay! Woo! Muff Movies fans hate it when things are inconsistent. Uh, yeah, sometimes we have to go back and re-record the whole thing because of one little misstep like this. Yeah. My three listeners need to have the show <laughs> that they expect. Meanwhile, right, the Wezzes that... have swarmed over the uh, the Studebaker <laughs> and have vibrating their bodies to raise the temperature and they just <laughs> melt it out of their way. Finally! <laughs> down! Down, Wezzes! Down! <laughs> The Wezzes abandon their TIE fighters and all shimmy down into the underground catacombs. They find, finally, hangar number 12, <laughs> where our heroes have been gassing up the microjet. Boys, we got company! <laughs> Says someone. <laughs> Says the company spotter. It's, yeah, he's the uh, flight mechanic. His name's Johnny Exposition. <laughs> Slim Pickens grabs Johnny Exposition and bites his jugular out. Oh, no. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. <laughs> I reckon you had it coming. Not only are they slowly uh, motoring their way away from the uh, Wezzes now running on foot after them in the underground hangar. So wait, are they but... motoring and wondering what's the price for flight? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> But the crowd of evil Wes's parts, and they see Tina Turner riding high aloft the evil, spiritually corrupted, autonomous camel schooner. Vengeance! Oh my god, its exhaust pipe is shooting out green flame, and its front is decked out with chrome teeth and skulls, which are gnashing and closing and screaming crikey says mad max i'm gonna get you if it's the last thing i do mad max says tina i mean you raggedy man technically i don't know your name it's mad max he says <laughs> too late for me to change it you raggedy man now that the, the microplane uh, goes faster and faster, barely keeping ahead of Tiny Tina's evil scooter. <laughs> schooner. When they begin to see that the exit of the cavern's maw, which, by the way, drops precipitously <laughs> off a cliff. Oh, Mad Max, I got bad news for you. Uh, we're just too heavy. We're not going to take off. Oh, no. Mad Max looks from one child's face to the other. <laughs> and then to the face of Master, which of these human weights is the most disposable? 
first he takes a heavy sigh, unties the rope that was attaching the uh, grand piano, the refrigerator full of Coors Light, the giant crate labeled fusion powered jetpacks will fly forever. <laughs> Can't trust this. Not manufactured in Australia. <laughs> Oh, you did pretty good there, Max, but we're just, uh, just a bit too heavy. Mm, maybe you could, I don't know, throw the monkey off. <laughs> Mad Max looks and sees that the monkey has rejoined him. Uh, his eyes have changed from red to green. Oh, it's Allegiance is back with the goodies. <laughs> Not in your Nelly. I love this monkey more than me on life, and I'll prove it. Mad Max sighs, and in slow motion releases the back of the super packed microplane <laughs> allowing himself to tumble off onto the underground tarmac briefly in, in, one, in one slow motion moment forms jesus on the cross as he flies back <laughs> <laughs> his arms spread to the sides i believe i could fly <laughs> um unfortunately for max they were uh, traveling at like 60 <laughs> miles an hour and he is just tumbled and shredded up by the yeah. asphalt of the road just like a watermelon on a gigantic cheese grater it's just taking just handfuls of flesh out of him as it just grinds him uh, oh max. struth <laughs> max has turned into a human sausage all right, boys, hold up," <laughs> says Tina Turner, or uh, Auntie, uh, as they watch the microplane filled with supernumeraries and who cares what take off, flying into the horizon, uh, th the billion Wes Army, <laughs> and Tina Turner look down at the scrambled eggs that is our hero. <laughs> 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 What is it, Max? T uh, Tina Turner <laughs> bends down to listen to the garbled words of this mutilated man. Mission accomplished, says Max. <laughs> Barter Town is yours. Oh, I guess technically he did do the job, <laughs> says Auntie. Good job. A tiny banner that says mission accomplished drops down <laughs> behind him. Da 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 da. <laughs> Max levels up and grows into a slightly larger pile of human effluvia. <laughs> when you level up, you get healed. <laughs> <laughs> Not in Barter Town, baby. No. <laughs> Auntie looks with sympathy down at the ravaged body of Max. She pours some hydrogen peroxide on him, which really doesn't do anything but hurt him. <laughs> hey. I'll see you around, raggedy man. Game it, respects game. Ain't we just a couple of assholes? <laughs> <laughs> she turns around. All right, Wezzes, I think we can make it home before dinner orgy. <laughs> Sniff you on the flip, a-hole. <laughs> Mad Max slowly loses consciousness, as does the camera crew. <laughs> Fade cut. Two. A helicopter shot, a microplane shot of the deserty ruins of a collapsed city. Is this Blade Runner 2049? <laughs> no, it's just Australia, baby. <laughs> it's like one of the nicest towns in New South Queensland. This is Adelaide's best tourist destination. <laughs> Um, we hear uh, the voiceover of Savannah telling us that their tribe finally returned to Tomorrow Morrow Land, and it fucking sucked, because <laughs> there were no people, all the windows were blasted out, and there was no power until they returned, and a little man named Master... Gave them the power of man's red flower. <laughs> that's that's fire to the uninitiated. Who be do? <laughs> we see uh, a new generation of tiny savage children watching an old lady Savannah using a ragged piece of metal scrap to represent a television to tell the story 
of how one fake plane pilot helped them meet a real pilot and <laughs> <laughs> return to the big city. Where where they were they once hunted animals in an oasis of beauty. Now they hunt for old dented cans of spam amongst the ruins of civilization. And as the Hellascorpions closed in on the city, <laughs> the children clapped and cheered for their memories of a world long gone. Thank God for that raggedy, raggedy man whose name we don't know and don't even care to learn. This has been Muff Movies! I don't know how long I gotta sit down. I'll drink a whiskey drink, I'll drink a lager drink, I'll drink a plaza drink. Oh, damn good times. I love that movie. I truly do. Really? Oh, yeah. It is It is one of my, I mean, it's my second favorite of the Mad Max movies. Oh, okay. Yeah, that checks out. Me too. <laughs> Actually, I'm not actually so sure. I remember when we finished Mad Max um, Road Warrior, <coughs> you were like, Mark, don't worry. From here on out, the Mad Max franchise gets a budget. You're going to be fine. And I was like, awesome. Like, I'm in store. You know, Tina Turner's in this one. Oh, like, and did I'm... I mention I've got terrible taste and a brain <laughs> full of bad ideas? <laughs> Like, I've heard about Thunderdome before. It's going to be good. And then, like, Thunderdome is done in the first half an hour. Yep. And the rest of it is, like, crazy fucking ridiculous Lost Boy frolics for no reason. Mad Max winds up in the end in the exact same place he was in the beginning. Actually, worse than he was in the beginning. And some kids we don't care about are like, yeah, thanks, Max. Yeah. but And, and also... It's it's important to point out that all like <clears throat> six kids max make the trip to Barter Town. The mm -hmm. rest of their village stays in Shady Canyon Town. Yep. They are left to die and are ignored by history. Who even knows what became of them? All they now they just have another story of another group of people going out for help <laughs> and abandoning them. <laughs> They become the Abandonites. Yeah. Um, you know, though, to be honest, uh, like in our version, we only left two kids alive <laughs> to go to the city. Yeah. In the real movie, there's maybe six. That's no. not enough people to rebuild a civilization. You're going to get a lot of inbred <laughs> kids. I mean, here's the thing. They could get lucky and pick up maybe a handful, like not all at once, but like maybe once every six months, take in a Wes. <laughs> <laughs> convert him yeah you can't take like two or three wezes at once that's they're gonna overwhelm you but yeah they're gonna form a hive <laughs> I, that is <laughs> that is i can tell you right now i'm going to go to sleep tonight chuckling to myself <laughs> about the wes swarm pouring out it's that was... such it's such a niche thing like if <laughs> If a listener has not listened to Road Warrior <laughs> yeah. or has not seen Road Warrior, they're going to be like, who the fuck is Wes? And why is this so funny, these jack holes? <laughs> oh, but I mean, oh. I genuinely do love this movie because one, I love Tina Turner mm -hmm. and she does a great job. Like she is, she is, I think, she, I mean, listen, I don't know anything about acting. I'm an improv guy. I'm like the inverse of acting, but <laughs> a reverse acting. <laughs> I'm a reverse, You're the reverse Sarlacc of acting. I am the reverse. I'm a reverse French kiss of acting, but I thought she was awesome. And it could just be that I like her so much, but man, she was amazing in this movie. And I wish she had done way more acting. And also, we don't need another hero is amazing. It's a great song. I put it on mixes all the time. <laughs> even when it's inappropriate. I put it on my grandma's funeral music. <laughs> Listen, that song is not when you say even when it's not appropriate, if you put that song in a, like a wedding mix, you fucked up. Okay. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> that song is actually never really appropriate to any situation unless like you're in a waiting room. Then yeah. it's perfect. 
I put it on my dentist dentist dentist, a, dentist appointment jams 2022 tooth extraction mix. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we did it, Dave. We damn well did it. Um, if I may, I'd like to plug some art that I'm up to. I wish I could be everywhere Mark was doing art. <laughs> I just love the art. <laughs> Yeah, uh, folks, if you like the comedy stylings of Muff Movies, um, please, please, please uh, check out Other World Theater's website or YouTube page where, if you're not in Chicago, you can see me perform uh, videotaped with Portal Prov. If you're in Chicago, come to Portal Prov on Sunday nights. It's every Sunday night, and I'm in most of the shows. So uh, you can watch that on the net as well. And that's also through Other World Theater. So check them out. Whew. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is three Mad Max movies down, Dave. Whew. Do we have the strength? Do we have the determination? The gumption? The, the testicular w- fortitude? Do we have the wes? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I believe, I believe I have the Wes <laughs> for one more ride. Oh, yeah. Although if Furiosa comes out <laughs> before we do this, we're fucking... I, and yeah, it's people are like, that movie came out three years ago. Yeah. Damn good times. <sighs> Dave, thank you so much for muffin with me. Oh, thank you for having me on board for this, this nitro burning funny car of Wes action. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh. Good night, dear Muffbos. Good night.